the right is trying desperately to promote their own version of the squad, and it's hilarious. Uh, Congresswoman Malia Takas, let's start with you for one moment. Um, you guys didn't necessarily name yourself or decide, I guess, to, to brand yourselves as the Freedom Force, but here we are. That's who, it's who you are. So what does it mean? What distinguishes the Freedom Force from other Republicans in Congress, and what is the mission? Well, I think there are many that actually do share our mission, but the goal here is to fight back against those who are trying to fundamentally change our nation, those who want to destroy jobs and completely wipe out industries, those who are trying to change our history, trying to cancel our founding fathers, those who want to indoctrinate our children and strip our freedoms and liberties. I think what our message to the American people and to those who are attempting to do this is that this is a very slippery slope. It starts with this, the government gets more and more control, and eventually we are in a socialist society, and that is what our families have fled, and we know and want to share that with people, because I don't know that everyone sees what is happening right before our eyes. Little by little, our liberties are being taken away as government grows and grows, and these individuals must be stopped, and we're going to be out there with that message and pushing back as well on the House floor. Congressman Salazar, you know, I think 10 years ago, maybe even five years ago, certainly Democrats, maybe even some of those in the middle would have waved their hands at Republicans claiming threats of socialism. In other words, they would have said, oh, that's hyperbole. But, you know, this isn't just theoretical, as, as Congressman Malliotakis pointed out, for you and others. Your families have experienced socialism firsthand. You know how it comes, and you know its cost as well. And that is, that's exactly right. And what Nicole said is it's right on point. We have a point of reference. We know what the other side looks like. We know what democratic socialism is. Misery, oppression, and exile. And the problem is that they're putting socialism and then on, on, on front of it, they're putting a pretty word. Either it's democratic socialism or pragmatic socialism or, or pretty socialism. It doesn't matter. Socialism. Social, socialism is an economic model that has failed. Freedom, free market, liberty, democracy, that is what we need. The American exceptionality is what 300 years ago was created, and we need to continue with that American agenda. If we go to socialism, we go to something called the banana republic agenda. We cannot do that for the future of my children and your children. So that's why right. we're here, united, together. And we created the Freedom Force, and... Uh, I'm delighted to be part of it. That is deliciously ironic at the end there when she says, we don't want to be like a, a banana republic with this banana republic agenda of the left. The term banana republic comes from the banana wars where the U.S. government, the CIA, they were toppling governments in... Central and South America, so that we could steal their resources like bananas. The United Fruit Company basically was, uh, was part of this. They were in on this. It was like, you know, the U.S. government and the CIA overthrowing uh, democratic countries so that we could just steal their resources and, you know, help our corporations. So think about how ironic that is. As she's going after the left... She's, she says, like, well, under socialism, we'll be like a banana republic. Meanwhile, the term banana republic is really, like, it's an indictment of U.S. imperialism and the U.S. overthrowing democratic governments and putting authoritarians in there. So it just, it, it, it flips the reality right on its head. It's really amazing. So one of the things she said is, I have so many notes jotted down here because it was crazy from beginning to end, but she talks about freedom... Free, a free market, liberty, and democracy. That's what we need to be for. Stop and think about that. She's slamming socialism, but she says we need freedom, free market, liberty, and democracy. One of the definitions of socialism is when you democratically control the workplace. So it's not just like, it's not just you democratically elect your leaders, your political leaders, and then, like, that's government stuff, and then the economy is separate, and it's over here. If you democratically control the workplace, that's socialism. So, like, all the workers vote on the decisions of the companies. That's socialism. 
And she says we need democracy. Socialism is just an expansion of democracy to the workplace. So again, even by her own words, like, hello, there isn't, like, there is no conflict here. There is no conflict. And by the way, when they say we want uh, freedom and a free market, they mean a free market in that the business owners can do whatever they want to do. That's what they mean. They mean the way a, a free market works in their conception of it is that all these businesses are little tyrannies. They're little dictatorships with a rigid hierarchy structure where the boss can tell everybody what to do. The boss, and then the boss has the manager underneath them, and then the manager's like, you know, the foot soldier of the boss, and you got to keep the workers in line. And so that's what she means by free market. Funny enough, it's a more um, tyrannical structure, you know? And so to act like you're against tyranny when your idea is to have a marketplace that is tyrannical, it's just, it's so ironic. And they talk about freedom like, okay, so freedom, do you guys support legalizing marijuana. Do you guys support legalizing all drugs? That's true freedom. Do you support legalizing physician-assisted suicide? That's true freedom. Like, do you support... Th these words matter. And they like to use the labels without actually thinking about what it entails. Um, one of the parts, they say, we know what the other side looks like. Misery, oppression, and exile. And I always, like, these conversations are always so dumb. Because there's not even a good faith effort to view the other side in a charitable light. It's just smear from beginning to end. So, listen, all the examples that they would give as like failures of socialism or whatever, I would submit to you that the issues with these places is that it's there's authoritarianism. And whenever you have authoritarianism, it's not going to end well. So whenever there's like, you know, government control of of the press, so that there is no free press, and all you get is the propaganda. Like, that's a problem. But when they say socialism, you know, what it looks like is misery, oppression, and exile, I mean, well, what do they have to say about the Scandinavian countries, which are way more socialist than we are? They're further on the spectrum towards socialism than we are. There is more democratic control of companies. There is, like, a heavily regulated... Um, economy and, and welfare state. Those are some of the most objectively productive and happy places in the world. And they just hand wave that aside. And usually what they like to do is say, oh, well, th they're good because of capitalism. We're more capitalist and we're worse off. So that's obviously not the answer. But like, they don't, anything that's inconvenient to their narrative, they just don't, they just put it off the table. So they're always going to go to, like, Venezuela as the go-to example. And by the way, whenever they bring it up, there's no conversation at all about ruthless sanctions that really, really hurt, you know, Venezuela. That's not to say that all the problems are brought about from the outside, but certainly some of them are, but they would overlook all that. Um, they say, eventually the government gets more and more control and will be in a socialist society. Fear-mongering that the government's going to get more and more control. I'd love to see what these people believe about the Patriot Act. I'd love to see what they said about Edward Snowden and Julian Assange. I agree. In some ways, I don't want the government to get more and more control. I don't want it to be creeping authoritarianism like it is with the Patriot Act, like it is with the intelligence agencies. I mean, we're going after journalists, a war on whistleblowers. They bring it up as if it's like there's a boogeyman problem that's socialism, but obviously none of these, we don't have any of these problems here, even though we do have a lot of these problems here when it comes to authoritarianism. Um, and it, it's just, the whole thing is goofy. They're coming up with the idea, we're the freedom force, and we're to counter the squad. Funny enough, freedom force for a name sounds incredibly forced. It sounds incredibly forced. Um, and whenever you define yourself as, we're just going to tell you what we're against, you know? And that's really what they're doing. They said, our mission is to fight back against those who want to I love this. Straw men all day long. Eliminate jobs, wipe out industries, cancel our founding fathers, and eliminate liberty. You know, the equivalent of this, this would be like if I talk about them and everything I say is just like, you guys are all fascists, white supremacists. That's what I think you are. 
I don't provide any arguments. I don't provide any evidence. That would be like the equivalent of the smug ass commentary that they're doing. My mission is to fight back against fascists who want to do fascist things, you know, bro? That's what I'm against. Again, I'll read it again. Our mission is to fight back against those who want to eliminate jobs, wipe out industries, cancel our founding fathers, and eliminate liberty. I don't... It's hard for me to wrap my mind around the fact that people like this exist. It's like they're actively trying to not have a real conversation. And they're just like caricatures of themselves, parodies of themselves. So anyway, Freedom Force is going to be a dud. It's not going to go anywhere. They're utterly ridiculous. And they're incapable of having a good faith discussion. 